Today I want to talk to you guys about the supply function. It's pretty much the same in its form as the demand function, but um, instead of using the A and the B variable, instead we're going to use the C and the D variable. They're not really any different. We could call them A and B or anything you want. They are just a variable. But we do use C and D instead of A and B just to keep them separate a little bit and maybe make it a little bit uh, simpler. Maybe it makes it less simple. Who knows? Anyhow, one other big difference you'll notice is that the supply function does have a positive um, slope to price. Um, and again, that reflects the positive relationship that exists between price and quantity supplied. When we look at the function, what we're saying is that quantity supplied has some relationship to price. It starts from a certain point, and then based on what happens to price, it changes in a positive fashion. So positive price with positive quantity. When price goes up, quantity also goes up. It changes in a positive fashion based on the price that occurs. So we see the same law of supply that we saw before. It's no different. But remember what we're talking about is that as price goes up, Producers are incentivized to take their scarce resources and start devoting them to this product as opposed to some other product. It means the opportunity cost of producing those other products is increasing. And the opportunity cost of producing this product as the price rises is now decreasing. So that gives them incentive to produce more of this. Remember, price is rising because buyers are signaling to producers, they're saying, hey, we want you to use more of your scarce resources on this so that we can buy more of it with more of our scarce resources, money. Now, when we take it apart, again, the C variable, it, it's saying this is where supply would begin. The question is, can supply ever begin somewhere on the positive side of our Q or our X axis? Well, I think theoretically it would be pretty hard to justify that it could. Um, let's think about what that means. Let's think about what would happen if we had the supply curve starting here at positive 5. What that would be saying would be that if the price was zero, some supplier would be willing to supply five of them. To me, that's kind of hard to accept. I think if the price was zero, and again, this is ceteris paribus, so we're not thinking that it might change later in the future. We're not saying that this is a, um, you know, a marketing scheme to get buyers or anything like that. Well, if the price were zero, I don't see why anyone would actually supply any. Um, and so I think that that's true all the way down to even the price of zero. If the price came up just a little bit, um, I'm not sure that we should see a supply curve starting from the origin either. Nonetheless, you will see those examples given where supply curves do start from zero and where they do start from the x-axis. Most often, though, I think we will see where they start from the y-axis, which what that really means is that if you were to follow it through, you would find the C variable somewhere here on the negative side of the Q axis. But remember, that doesn't really make sense either because we can't really have a negative quantity. We can't have a negative quantity of shirts or a negative quantity of uh, oil changes or anything like that. Since in economics we only deal with the positive quadrant, well, again, even though we have this over here, it's not saying that you owe somebody that amount. Nonetheless, you will see that many times, if not always, your functions will begin with a negative C variable. Okay, um, let's look at this function that I have here, and again, let's just take it apart for a second. We're saying that quantity supply begins back here at negative 10, somewhere over here, which means that it's going to intersect the y, um, the y axis on its positive uh, part. It starts at negative 10, and then it changes by 2 for every single rise there is in price. We can test this by looking at, at this point here, where we have price went from 5 up to 10. So we have a rise of 5, 
and it went from zero over to 10, so a run of 10. Remember, this is going to be run over rise, um, so what that means is we have a run of 10 over a rise of five. So our coefficient of P is gonna be two. That's where that two is coming from. Likewise, if we were to go up one to six, we would see that this would come over to two there. So again, that confirms that. So we should see this line just go off, you know, pretty much forever in that fashion. Let's practice taking a function and plotting the curve from that function. The first thing we want to do is we want to solve for the p-intercept. If that is positive for some reason, or if it's zero, or if it were zero, it just wouldn't be there. If this is positive or zero, well then we can just go ahead and put it on the curve like we did with the demand function. So for example, if this was qs equals 8 plus 4p, we could just go right here to 8, and that's one of our points. We don't really have to solve anything. Here, however, because it's negative, we do need to solve for it. Remember what we're saying is that when price is 0, well, this would be back here at negative 8 somewhere. But because we can't graph negative 8, this point, it's not really valid. It doesn't really work. So what we do need to find is when quantity is zero, where are we on the p-axis? Where are we on the y-axis? So we're going to solve this this way. We're going to let quantity equal zero. So it's going to be zero is equal to negative eight plus four p. Now some of you can look at that right now and go, well, zero is equal to negative eight plus four times two. So is what we need. But the more proper way to solve this is we need to get 8 over onto this side and that leaves us with 4p. We divide by 4 on each side and p is equal to 2. So there's one of our points. So we can go ahead and put that in. So quantity of 0, price of 2. Now we just need one other point. So it could be three, it could be four, really anything. Let's just try the next one up. And let's go ahead and put that into our formula. So now we're gonna put price of three into this function. So quantity supply is equal to negative eight plus four times three. So quantity supplied is equal to negative eight plus 12. Quantity supplied is equal to four. Again, we should see right here that our, the, the four, what it means is it's a run over rise. So what we're saying is it's a run of four for every one up. Well, we went from two to three, and this changed by four. Here, we went from zero to two, so that's a, that's a rise of two, and we have a run of eight from eight to zero. So we should see that function Really, we should see its characteristics all throughout this as we go through and solve. To plot this, we just need to go to 3 and 4, and you're going to use a straight edge so that you don't miss like I did. And that's going to be the proper supply curve for the function that is given. On that, we should see the next one should be 4 and then up 1 over 2, so that's 6, up 1, over 2, so that's 8. So we should see 4, and 6, and then 5 should coordinate with 8, okay? That's it with supply functions. It's really not that difficult. Remember to solve for the p-intercept first. If this is 0 or positive, you don't even need to do that. You can just put that point on and then graph one other point, and that's going to be your supply curve.